So we're doing Discovering Discus for Hybrid Learning Grades 6 to 8 for the Sumter PD Day. And these will be the pieces that we will go over uh, during this session and some in more detail than others. So we're going to go ahead and stop this share. We're going to do a new share here. And that is going to be our uh, Discus website. So if you all want to follow me out there, if you have another device or if you want to open a new tab, uh, you are welcome to do that. Um, I'm just going to go out to the Discus website. This is what you will find linked from your school library or media centers website. And I'll go over, uh, for those of you who have not used Discus before, you can access by grade level here and choose middle school or high school or even elementary. If you have some sixth graders who still need some of the elementary level uh, pieces, they're all there and accessible for you. You can also use the smart search here to search across multiple databases. And that's another piece I want to give you, especially if you are uh, teaching science, ELA, social studies for the upper level seventh, eighth grader who would like to have more of the Google-esque kind of experience where they can search across several of our Discus databases at once. So that's something that we'll be covering there as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you, uh, we're going to jump into grade level here, middle school, and I'm going to show you our Learn 360. And it looks like some of you have attended this morning, our morning session. So this one will be familiar to you from the morning session. We're just going to be looking at the middle school level content this time uh, to show a little bit different here. And uh, so that you can get a little bit a different view of what you would see. So Learn360 is well known for its videos. So if you need to pull a quick video into your Google Classroom, uh, demonstrating a concept or showing uh, processes of something, uh, perhaps it's when you're showing genetics, maybe with your sciences, uh, or if you want to show something such as the water cycle there uh, for, for your class, you can easily pull in videos from Learn360 here. And I am going to uh, try to move this bar out of our way. So you can see you have videos, games, activities, maps, flags. One of you just added to the chat that you're interested in STEM lessons and STEM related pieces. There are also those that are available here as well. Notice this is for K through 12 right now. You can actually go up to the smart uh, menu next to Learn360 here and limit it to middle and high school if you prefer to do that first before you search. You can use this uh, database for unit planning. You can use it for, like I said, in-classroom instruction. You can also use this whenever you assign students to look for things. If you are requiring them perhaps to work in groups to find information about the Titanic and you maybe require them to have a video, uh, they can also uh, be able to utilize these databases as well. Notice at the top now, I can go in and do a direct search on, uh, let's say, the water cycle here as a science kind of topic. Notice across the top of my results, I can pull videos, encyclopedia articles, related experiments, images, printables, which are going to be PDF format printables if you want your students to be able to do something offline perhaps um, maybe get away from the glaze of the of the screen there and do some do an activity offline there'll be printables here too but notice right now we have middle and high school grades but if you just want to limit those results to middle school you can do that here so we have grades six through eight 544 results uh, for videos here it looks like some people are getting bumped out of this and coming back in. So if you do get bumped out, just click back on your link provided by uh, the Sumter PD folks there, and I will let you back in. Looks like I'm letting in a couple here now. Um, so then you can also see 
Once you do that, you can browse through the videos. There may be different pieces that you're wanting to emphasize. Maybe it's condensation specifically. Maybe it's just a general overview such as this one. But notice when you click on your video, you are going to be able to integrate that directly into your Google Classroom as soon as that video loads. So you'll see that here, the Google Classroom uh, integration. As long as you are logged into your Google account and your Google Classroom there, you're gonna be able to go in and make an assignment with that video. You would be able to print, um, put it in as an announcement uh, or whichever uh, piece that you want uh, to actually make it whenever you go into your Google Classroom there. The student would then click the link in your Google Classroom and it will take them out to this video. If at any point they do need, they do get that very first screen that I showed you at the beginning of the session where it's asking for a Discus login, they're going to use that username and password that I provided you there. So again, it's a good idea to post that into your Google Classroom. Notice here, you also get transcript. So if you quickly as a teacher just want to see, is this video actually going to cover what I need it to cover for my lesson? You can kind of view the transcript there on the right and see what all is going to be emphasized in this short video. You can also click on the segments tab just beside it and see other pieces such as a video quiz about the water cycle here. Uh, or other pieces that you'll find within segments of that video. Notice the whole video is 32 minutes long. So if you only want to show this seven minute introduction to the water cycle here, you can click on that segment to see that one segment. The other piece that you can do uh, within this, if you're an ELA teacher, or if you are um, a math teacher, another subject content, you can also uh, do the same things that we just did, just changing the, the actual piece. So if you're introducing students to novels, something to do with the novel or a particular author, perhaps, maybe a short story author there, you can, um, again, do a search here, you can make sure that you pull the, the grade levels for middle school. And you'll be able to also integrate those, uh, those different videos into your class for ELA. Those of you that are doing math, maybe you're doing pre-algebra or algebra or geometry uh, lessons uh, for sixth, seventh or eighth grade, certainly you can do a keyword search on that as well. So you can see with every search, these tabs change up a bit depending on your search content. So if I limit again to my middle school and I go up um, to the top after, we, after they filtered everything, I can click on printables here and see what is available uh, to help explain uh, to my students, maybe Boolean algebra here, maybe uh, geometric practice, math games with numbers. So you can see these are going to actually be printables that are PDF documents that you have here. So if you are working with students, uh, let's say they're um, working on ratios, maybe they're uh, doing some practice with ratios or long division or another topic there, you can see that you could then go to the printables here and you're going to be able to provide handouts related to those topics. And these, when you click on share here, these are also uploadable to your Google Classroom. Or you might just want to share one of these handouts with a parent. Maybe in the hybrid uh, format, you've, a parent has said, my student's struggling with this particular aspect of math. You can actually email a link to this to that parent. Uh, and again, you want to make sure that they do have the username and password to be able to access that. If you want to see what STEM lessons may relate to a particular topic, you can click on that uh, tab uh, that is uh, related there. And
and you can kind of browse through to see what would be relevant for your student there. If you want to have an activity that they do that's related to STEM. So this is a very robust free place for you to go and locate videos, printables, uh, STEM lessons, uh, science experiments, etc. You can also just go up to the logo here. If we go up to the Learn360 logo, you'll see all of those options across the top. So if you don't do a specific search, such as water cycle or ratios or novels for your content, you can just browse what is there. So if you wanna browse videos here, you can actually browse the playlists that are there. Uh, someone in chat at the beginning asked about career related resources for middle schoolers. Uh, these are going to be uh, here featured in career development under your featured videos. So you could just uh, use the arrow at the end to sort of browse through different careers if they're doing career exploration there. Um, you can bring those into your classroom. You can see uh, some more of STEM with engineering related pieces here. The featured language arts videos, ELA of Mice and Men, Steinbeck there, uh, science and health, your history related resources. So those pieces that you might be wanting to pull something up and explain to a student there, you can browse through those also. So notice these are going to be all of your subject uh, content so that you can just browse them if you prefer to do that. If you are teaching, you know, uh, social studies, if you're teaching uh, South Carolina history, if you're teaching about the states or the continents, if you're doing a cultural history day, uh, there are going to be videos that just really run the gamut there that you're going to be do, able to do everything I just showed you with, uh, with the water cycle one. I'm going to pause for a moment. If anyone, I don't see anything in chat at the moment um, here. I'm just looking to see if there is anything in chat. Uh, if you do have questions, please pause me and I'll be glad to, uh, to show you more details about something there. This is one of the first ones that I love to show you because you can also browse subjects of these videos. So again, I've just clicked on the videos. I'm gonna browse subjects here. Those of you who are Spanish teachers in middle school, hey, look what we have. Uh, great Spanish world language videos here for them to pick up pieces, science videos, ELA, grammar. So you can actually start by browsing the subject section to get to what you would like. So if you are teaching Spanish, for instance, um, or German or French, you see that there are over 200 videos available. And if you want to limit them to, again, to your middle school age range there, um, you'll be able to then view here those videos, both those that are in Spanish and those where they are learning Spanish. So if you need, uh, some of the students may need help with verb conjugation or a piece there, uh, you're going to be able to go in and utilize those videos just like uh, you could with the water cycle. So you could put that in your Google Classroom there and add that piece. So this is a, a going to really help you in the hybrid environment because whether the students are at home or at face-to-face, -face, you're going to be able to pull up and use these resources. So the other piece, um, once you've actually utilized some of that and gotten familiar with Learn360 there, um, want to show you, you can also show the closed captioning on videos, especially when you're showing these um, in a hybrid environment virtually. Um, it's very useful for the student to be able to see the words. For the students to be able to see the words as they're spoken there. The next piece that I'm going to segue over to, and if any of you do have a question at any time, we can always go back and, and look at something in more depth. 
but I want to show you this new teen book cloud that we just purchased this year after the shutdown in March. We purchased access to this collection of nonfiction and fiction books. Uh, that includes some pieces like the AP English, more for the high school level. But notice there are fiction and nonfiction books here that your students will have access to over holidays. So if they're off for the winter break, you could encourage them to keep reading and read something they enjoy uh, over that break so that they're not losing as much uh, of their skills while they're away. You can also assign specific titles. So if you are, uh, you can see here, there are teen fiction books that are going to appeal to different uh, levels of students, high, low fiction there, middle school fiction. So you see that a lot of these are gonna be more your middle school level uh, of readers for students. Classics, so if you are teaching uh, maybe a classic book here, maybe Last of the Mohicans, uh, Ventures in Wonderland, Alice's Adventures, et cetera, you can kind of see how all of these are broken out for you. Um, many of you may be teaching Animal Farm, for instance, uh, in your middle school um, or early high school. So you can see that you can choose those just from browsing the collection. But if you do have something specific you want to locate, you can go to the search at the top and those of you who are familiar with tumble books, which is for K through sixth graders, you'll notice that the, the actual software is very similar because it is the same vendor that provides this. So if I want to uh, search on uh, George Orwell here, for instance, I can search to see what books he has. If I am teaching Animal Farm uh, and going through that section, I can locate the Animal Farm book here and notice we have different formats. So we have Animal Farm, we have the AP Animal Farm, we have an audiobook that is strictly reading, uh, it's just uh, an audio only. And then we have an enhanced ebook that your students can use. So that is uh, very simple. All they would do to read online is click Read Online, as you see here. And it is going to be actually read aloud to them. They can also pause it or turn off that read aloud piece uh, if they want to do that. They can also view the chapter headings if they maybe stop reading chapter two, they're reading chapter three. For instance, here they can easily navigate to the different parts of the chapters. You also have the ability, if you're showing one of these to students in class, you can change the text options uh, so that it's actually larger for them to see on the screen there, or they can do that if it's more comfortable for their eyes as well there. And these are the complete text of the books, of the novels, of the short stories, etc. cetera. Um, and I wanna show you also for the teachers, there are lesson plans that are tied into each book here, and often a reader's guide will be provided. So if we click on the reader guide here, um, you can see uh, that the, these are summaries of chapters here. Sometimes they have focus questions there uh, and other pieces that you're also able to uh, share to students or to uh, utilize yourself just for preparing for teaching a lesson on a particular author there. The other piece that you're going to find very useful uh, within Teen Book Cloud is that ability to link uh, the, the book to your Google Classroom. So you would actually go up to the index here within the blue navigation bar as a teacher again the student isn't going to be doing this but as a teacher you would go to the index and locate your title here so if i'm looking for animal farm they're uh, all going to be here in alphabetical order so i could scroll down to find my animal farm and if the one i want to link to is actually that enhanced ebook where you have the professional narrator 
narrating it, I would just simply click on the book ID and copy that link. That is the link that I would post into my Google Classroom assignment in order to have the student be able to click on it and access directly this Animal Farm ebook. So if you want the whole class to read it, that's fine because there is no limit. It's not one of those kind of ebook setups where only one student can be in the book at a time. Um, but you can uh, link that using the link in the index. So you would find the title in the index and then grab that book ID there on the left um, in order to uh, link any title uh, to your into a Google Classroom assignment. Uh, maybe if you're doing a Word document assignment, a PDF assignment, you can do that as well. For those of you who are not on the ELA side, um, there are also some good nonfiction for science and social studies and also some videos that you could use and link within the team book cloud. So if you want to, if you are ELA and you're looking at drama and poetry here, uh, you want to pull a, a book of poetry to have them read, you can do that. The nonfiction is great for uh, a lot of African American history. There's a pretty good collection here of some key court cases and pieces. There are also um, some, si some good science works that you could uh, use and share on the science side of the house there. But if we look at civics here, I'm just gonna browse through to show you these. Um, you're gonna have some that are actually speeches, uh, some that are um, works uh, that you have, for instance, Democracy in America books here. Um, this is just a little bit slow to load, so it's kind of slowly scrolling by for you there. Um, if we go ahead and scroll the top bar, it's like it's kind of slow to move here too. You can see that all of these are going to work similarly to uh, what I showed you uh, with your Animal Farm book. So you're still going to be able to go up to the index and link these uh, the same way. And as I showed you before, you can always do that direct search in the top right hand corner if you're wanting to identify some good books for your students to use and read. There are also graphic novels and some of these are actually best for your younger middle students like your sixth graders. If you are wanting them to keep up their reading whenever they have a long break from school or a holiday. Uh, this is a great place to show them because they really do, uh, these graphic novels really do appeal to the student. Uh, so these are some that you could link or you could actually have the student choose something that they want to read uh, just on their own there as well. Notice when we do a read online there, um, they're gonna be able to scroll through page by page and read their graphic novel. They also have a page menu on the top and a chapter menu. So if they maybe are coming back and they want to get back into chapter three and start from there, they can just use that index to be able to get to get into that that book. So Teen Book Cloud is our newest resource that's just been added in March and uh, permanently added in uh, October, actually, uh, but we have had access to it since March there. So that's something that you wanna keep in mind as you're needing to pull resources for, for lessons or for assignments on either side of the house there. So the other one that I wanna show you, those that attended this morning will know about World Almanac for Kids Elementary. Notice on our middle school page from Discus, we have World Almanac for Kids Intermediate. And this is really gonna be for like your fifth through ninth graders, depending on the content area. And this is great if you wanna pull down a science diagram or you wanna pull down a printable um, or even use a video there for some of the students. Uh, so uh, I'm just clicking in chat really quickly to see uh, if any of you have added any other 
uh, pieces there, questions or pieces there that I can address. Okay, so you can see that this is very easily navigable by a sixth grade student on up to eighth grade, but you also have features on the right, the teacher resources that you see on the right that correspond to each topic within this database as well. It's just going to be more advanced information. So those of you who are science teachers, the science projects that you see here, um, they're going to have earth science related ones, general science, physical science uh, related science projects. So this is, these are some things that you can actually conduct in class or you can show, uh, you can actually pull these up into your Google Classroom by uh, downloading the PDF file first to your device and be able to utilize some of these experiments with your students for the science side of the house there. So those are the science experiments. And you'll also find in printable handouts in World Almanac for Kids Intermediate, you're going to find those all follow the different sections, the different subjects. So if you're working as a math teacher for sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, you'll see here practices with expressions and equations. Uh, we mentioned ratios when we were talking about um, our um, when we were talking about uh, our Learn 360. So if you wanted to find another handout uh, here where they're learning to integrate fractions with word problems there, those are going to be available to you as a teacher on that side. And then notice too, in addition, you have lesson plans, the actual lesson plans themselves that correspond to all the topics in this, in this database. So if I'm working on a topic within social studies here, uh, ancient civilizations for our, our middle schoolers there, you'll find uh, that you can find lesson plans related to those ancient civilizations. And on the student side of the house over here under topics, they can actually go down to social studies and view all the information about ancient civilizations, primary sources, US and world history, government. So if I go to ancient civilizations here, for instance, notice the format is similar to what we showed the, in this morning session where all of your text-based information is on the left about each ancient society there. All of your fun facts are here if you're wanting to introduce, uh, introduce a, a unit, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, maybe pull up one of these fun facts about the Great Wall of China. Uh, as an introductory. You might want to just pull that into your um, Google Classroom and have your students view this article about the Great Wall of China before class starts so that you all can have some talking points. Also, what you're going to see uh, in addition to the fun facts are the videos, games, puzzles, and other key people related to whatever your topic is that you've searched on. So if you're teaching about hurricanes and uh, that piece in the science side of the house, you would be able to utilize these. So if I go into my video again, uh, uh, Origins of Rome that we find here, again, you're going to be able to go in and share that directly. If all you want is that one video, you'll be able to share that to the Google Classroom. Uh, as well. So you have quite a variety here just in the World Almanac for Kids Intermediate that actually covers a lot of the topics for the fifth grade through ninth graders there. Um, the, the attendee the, earlier in the session who asked about careers and career ideas, there are a lot, there's a lot of exploration the student can do here on adventurous careers, animal related careers, business careers here on your left, and then related videos here on your right. So that could be very useful to that set as well. 
And notice your student also has access to homework helps. So if they are struggling with using reference guides, a dictionary, uh, writing help, maybe uh, with writing the research paper, there are all kinds of videos here on the right about plagiarism and other pieces of doing research related things. There are some helps for math as well. So if they're needing, you know, a little help about measuring or converting Fahrenheit and Celsius or doing any of those pieces, they're going to find that under more homework help. And then if you as a teacher just want to view all the videos, you can just click on videos here and be able to uh, view all the videos by subject. So those that indicated your science uh, teacher, life or physical science there, you can uh, choose the topic and just view all of the various uh, videos. You can also uh, go straight to biomes if you're, if you're studying that unit or talking about that unit or mammals here. So there are very many different ways to approach getting at the information. Uh, you can also search on a topic like hurricanes or natural disasters there and be able to find the articles, being able to find the related science projects and images. So there are a, a robust amount of information and many different ways to find the information. So it should be suitable to your students uh, in differentiated learning on how they learn and how they're able to search and use some of these as well. So the next piece that I wanted to show you all for middle school is actually um, within our smart search. I had mentioned smart search to you where you can search across several of these databases at once. If you have an assignment and you want your students to actually pull information um, from, maybe you want them to find a magazine article, a book, and a video, for instance, you can have them do their search here. And I'm just going to, again, search on water cycle for the sake of time and show you that example. But you can see here, as this begins to load, that the student is actually searching across several of our databases. It's going to be a little bit more complicated, so this is going to be more for your seventh and eighth grade student, but it gives them a little bit more search experience that really provide, helps them when they move on to high school. They will have an overview of their topic. Notice on the left, they can limit by date. So if they only need the last five years or the last 10 years of articles and such, they can actually limit that on the left with their filters. Also notice they can just look for news articles or magazine articles. They can limit to specific types of information. And then finally, you as a teacher may wanna only pull those from a specific database. Maybe you're only interested in going in and pulling um, all of those that are listed there for it's going to put these in alphabetical order. Maybe you only want the Learn 360 videos related to the water cycle. You can still filter here, but this keeps you and the student from having to go in and out of several databases to find what you're looking for. So if they're only interested in, um, let's say, if they're only wanting to look uh, for maybe related ebooks, they can click on ebooks here and filter there so all of their results are just ebooks. So if you have asked them to go in and find a, a book about the water cycle, that's how they would do it. They could do an overall search, filter to ebooks under I want to see, and then they're going to be able to use this book. These books are also, um, you're able to use these with multiple students at the same time. So once again, uh, that's not going to be a problem, but if you wanted to link this to your Google Classroom, maybe have them view the book, or maybe you're going to work through the book. Perhaps you're going to do a section on uh, chapters or certain clouds or different uh, information there uh, related to the water cycle, for instance. You can 
actually link this to your Google Classroom, or you can get the permalink and you can uh, send this in an email. So if you wanted to, you know, maybe send this to a parent or send it to another colleague and let them link out to uh, the book, you can do that as well. The beauty of these books is that it's going to be the full text. They're not having to pay extra like they would if, if they searched through uh, Google Scholar or one of those for the books. But notice also, in addition to browsing their table of contents on the left, they also can search within the title. So if they're only looking for um, the pages that include something specifically about clouds uh, that have to do with the water cycle, they can run a search uh, with search within the book itself to locate all of those pages. And it's kind of slow because we have a, a lot going on here with the PD day and all of the uh, internet, but this will eventually load and show them all of the pages they could click on to see that section there. Back at the table of contents, they could also just look at the index. So if they're used to using the index in a book to quickly find something, they can locate their page numbers here. They'll see clouds on all of these pages that you see here, for instance. So this is actually using smart search to locate magazine articles, books, and other pieces. So that's going to be more for your upper level student there. Um, and I'm going to quickly show you, we also have tutor.com, which is a free tutor assistance service that is available to your middle schoolers. In fact, K through 12th graders in South Carolina have access to tutor.com. So any of you as teachers, if you are teaching a concept, maybe your student has just failed a math test, maybe they failed a science test, maybe they're just struggling to understand um, some reading comprehension, this tutor.com is also free and it's going to allow the student to go in and locate a tutor for reading, for grades K through seven here, for math, sciences. So if they have, if they're working with algebra here, they can go and connect up live with a, a math algebra tutor. If there's something in science that they're not understanding, maybe it is with genetics or uh, learning how to understand the periodic table. Uh, again, your Spanish uh, classes, Spanish students also have access to tutors that can help with their Spanish classes there. And all they would need to do, they do not have to create an account to do this. They could just click on algebra here, for instance, and they would wait for it to load here. This is going to be a free virtual online tutor. So, as you see here, they would just click the little red, just click the arrow to get out of that uh, feature. They're going to connect directly with the tutor here for math, algebra. They select their grade, if it's seventh grade, eighth grade, et cetera. They can choose a tutor uh, that can talk with them, you know, uh, as an audio piece or they can just text and say, um, I failed my math test and um, uh, need assistance uh, with fractions or, or whatever they want to tell that tutor. And then they're going to actually go in and connect now with a tutor. and you'll see how that person will then appear. So they, they locate a tutor who is actually um, qualified to assist with that grade level and that content. And notice they can also, whenever they are going to connect with a tutor, they can also attach a file. So if they wanna attach that failed math test there to get additional assistance, they can do that as well. So that's something that I uh, want you all to be aware of, that for all the core content classes, there are tutors that are available for them when they're learning from home um, uh, that you should be aware of as well to be able to help direct them 
to that additional service. I will also show you, they've also added study skills to tutors. So if you have students who are struggling taking notes or just coming up with a, a way to manage their studying effectively, if you have parents that are interested in learning about helping their students schedule and organize, maybe uh, helping them with study techniques, there's also tutors that can help the parents out here as well. So in addition to all of these eBooks and videos and other resources, there's also this tutoring support. And you can get more information about this from our Discus training site under online archives. If there's anything I showed you today that you want more detail about, you can go either database by database and learn more about it. Or if you want to know more about how tutor.com works, all of these videos are here on demand for you to use at any time. If you have students who are struggling to decide which database they might want to use, they could go to the A to Z list here, this tab on the Discus site, and notice the tutorials on the right. They can also uh, be able to get some quick ideas about how to search the databases here if they're not actually in your classroom and able to get that help from you as well. So I'm going to go back up into the chat here and see. I'm going to go back to sharing this screen for you. And if you will, uh, go ahead and fill out the, um, the survey for this session today. You can either snap it with your smartphone, you can go out directly uh, to this link that I have added in chat there uh, to get that feedback. There is so much here. There are probably over 40 databases that you can use for middle schoolers to high schoolers alone on our, on our site. So what I recommend is if there's something new that you see today, I recommend that you would just go out to that particular database and really use it to uh, the, the nth degree. Pull everything you possibly can for it as you're preparing your lessons. Get very familiar with Learn360 or very familiar uh, with one of the databases there uh, before you move on to the next one or before you want to introduce it to your student there. So I'm going to uh, just go back out now just to the live uh, website here. And I'm going to point out one last database here under the grade level middle school. And we are going to look at Credo Reference. This is a collection of ebooks. So your students and parents have an entire collection of reference books at their fingertips online at no charge. So if you are um, teaching something about, let's say, American Revolution here, once a student does a search there on, on any of the topics, and it can be, you know, novels or poetry or Americans um, there, once they conduct that search, they're going to get a mind map on the right that breaks out some of the subcategories of key people key features, key events related to that. And all of those books that I mentioned, the over 900 titles of reference books are going to be here on the right for your student to be able to pull up, use, and share. So they can actually save this out to their, um, to their Google Drive if they wanna save an article from a book to their Google Drive. They can also save the citation format if they want to be able to cite that source. So you can see there's a whole lot going on here with Discus and we will be continuing to do more trainings. Uh, we also train at your schools. We work with your media specialist to do after school trainings. If any of you are interested in that, you might mention that to your, uh, to your media specialist at your school. Otherwise, you are welcome to use our online archives 
our training resources, or join us in live webinars throughout the year with our training calendar. So the training resource that you see here will give you a quick guide to all of these databases that I've shown you and more in case you're just wanting to see which databases would be good for literature, which are going to have videos, which are good for geography. Uh, and this is printable and downloadable. Again, this one is actually found under training, training resources. Okay, so we've come up to the top of the hour there. I'm going to stop the recording so that uh, you'll be able to